Hi to all of my DIY friends out there. I am so excited to have you here today because we are finally diving into spring and Easter DIYs. I don't want to say hello. My name is Shannon. I want to welcome you here to my channel, The Daily DIYer. And if you're anything like me, you are so ready for spring. We actually still have snow on the ground here, so I'm definitely dreaming of a warmer days. And I'm so excited to be bringing you along with me today to show you some brand new, inexpensive, but easy decorating and crafting ideas for Easter and spring. And we're gonna get started right now. I think we've all seen these black doormats at Dollar Tree. And this particular trip, I had to do a little bit of digging, but I found these great gray carpet squares. They are so much nicer, thicker, kind of a Berber style carpet with a nice thick background. And as soon as I saw them, I thought Easter bunny. So we're gonna make a bunny doormat. I also picked up a piece of poster board from Dollar Tree and I am cutting that down to the exact size of the carpet so we can make a bunny template. So I also went on Google, found a bunny silhouette that I really liked. I'm gonna be using my projector to project this image onto the wall and put my poster board over that shadow so I can draw and trace that bunny and that will make it larger for us to create a larger size uh, doormat that we're going for. If you and if you don't have a projector, you can also just freehand an image on a piece of poster board too. I love my projector though. I use it for a lot of projects, especially during Christmas time. So I will link the one that I use down in the description box below. They're pretty cheap on Amazon. As you can see, I'm just coming in with a marker, tracing out that bunny silhouette onto that poster board. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that over to our work surface and we are going to take our scissors and cut that out. And now that we have our template cut out, we're gonna flip our carpet square upside down and draw that silhouette onto the backside of the carpet square. And it helps to have a colored Sharpie marker to draw around the edges. You can see it once you remove that template. Now I'm gonna be using a couple different tools to cut the silhouette out with. First up is just a razor blade. You'll basically just trace those lines, pressing down firmly. You wanna get through that first top layer of backing. Once you have that kind of started, you can pop those edges by bending them and then come in with some heavy duty scissors and then continue cutting out the rest of the way. And the scissors will cut through the carpet that's on the top of your carpet square. And you'll just wanna continue doing this in small sections. And then once you have it completely cut out, you have this adorable bunny little mat, which we are just getting started with. I wanted to make sure this looked pretty finished. So we're also gonna take some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and use some fabric hack glue sticks. Yes, they make those and I'll link those down in the description box below too. This is going to ensure that our rope is not going to come unglued or come apart from the main part of the rug and give it longevity because you can actually use this rug at your front door. It would also be so cute in front of a sink or a stove as an accent piece. I think it's adorable and I hope you guys get a chance to try this out too. And here I wanted to show you mine displayed in front of our fireplace. I just see like a pet, like a cat or a dog curling up on this little cute bunny mat in front of the fireplace, but it'd be so cute if you added a layering mat underneath it and gives you that extra pop of springtime as you enter the front door. And I am so super excited to be teaming up with my friend Bethany and her channel Bargain Bethany today to bring you so many unique and amazing Easter and spring ideas. 
One incredible project you'll find in her newest video is this faux carrot cake that she makes with Dollar Tree spackle. Can you believe that? So head over to her channel next to see this project and more. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there. She is also so close to reaching 1 million subscribers and I can't wait for her to celebrate that huge milestone. And now we're gonna make a gorgeous and very high-end spring decor piece with the acrylic containers along with some styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree. You're gonna wanna grab the pack of six, so they're a smaller sized styrofoam ball. And yes, we're even going to need a brown paper bag for this and some tulips. Dollar Tree has tulips. Mine are the real feel type flowers I found on Amazon a few years ago. I'll link them down below if I can find them again. They're really pretty and look a little bit more lifelike, but you can also use Dollar Tree tulips too. And we're gonna cut those stems down and insert them into the styrofoam balls. We're gonna do that with all six of the styrofoam balls. We'll have six flowers total when we're done. And we're gonna make these look like more lifelike and real tulips with bulbs on the bottom. So. For the bulb part, we need to do some work with our paper bag. So I cut it down and then crinkled it all up so it looks a little more lifelike. And we're then gonna cut those down into strips and use our styrofoam balls as a sizing guide. You want your strips a little bit taller and bigger than our actual styrofoam balls, but not too big. We're gonna use some Mod Podge to then apply the paper bags onto those styrofoam balls. Just adding some of that to the bag and to the styrofoam and wrapping and using our scissors to help curl and cut and mold and shape the bags onto the styrofoam. So go ahead and do that with all six of your flowers and while the Mod Podge is drying, we're gonna work on the clear acrylic base, our planter basically. I took the stickers off of that and then use some Dollar Tree rock to fill in the bottom and then some green moss on the top. I haven't seen the moss at Dollar Tree yet this year. I'm gonna keep my eye open. So you can find it at craft stores and even Walmart too if you're having a hard time finding it at Dollar Tree. Just adding that onto the top is a nice green layer. And we have to make our bulbs be able to sit in our vase. So we're gonna add a little bit of support on there with a dowel rod. You can then cut those down to about two or three inches long and we're gonna need one for each one of our bulbs you'll take a little exacto knife punch a hole in the bottom use some hot glue to then attach those dowel rods into the bottom and to make them look a little bit more lifelike even more than they are now we're also going to use some dollar tree spanish moss using some hot glue to attach that onto the bottom there that is going to make our little bulbs look like it has some roots coming out of the bottom Now, aren't these so cute? They look so lifelike, but the best part is they are not going to wilt and die and you can keep them up for as long as you'd like. Now, those little dowel rods in the bottom are what is going to help our flowers stay upright in our vase. So you'll just take the bulb and kind of twist them down into the rocks until they're stable and add all of your tulips and flowers into this Dollar Tree container. Tulips are my absolute favorite flower. I love yellow tulips actually, but the white matches our decor a little better. So that's why I went with white here, but I would love to know what is your favorite flower? Let me know down in the comments below. Next, I found these great round signs at Dollar Tree. I was inspired by the very popular welcome door signs for this one. And even though this is a little bit smaller, it's definitely a lot cheaper than buying the larger wood rounds. And I think they worked just as good. So we're gonna take this sign apart, make sure to save the little piece, the hanging piece on the back. It comes with a screw and you can use it later on for a different project for hanging. I did add some spackle into the hole and then sanded it once it was dry, got all of the adhesive and 
and sticker off the back and then took some masking tape. We're going to cut this in half or basically paint it in half, I should say, with a brown paint on top. And then I love Robin's egg blue for springtime. So we're going to paint the bottom a Robin's egg blue with some chalk paint. And it is so satisfying to remove that tape to reveal the line. We are going to add a vinyl decal onto this, but if you don't have a vinyl machine, you can always use a white paint pen or marker instead. I don't have the best handwriting, so you guys know my go-to is usually the vinyl decals. And just adding the Happy Easter to the front, and I thought it'd be cute to add a little Easter bunny on here too. And we're going to make our own Easter bunny with some burlap style ribbon. I thought this was so cute with the little polka dots on it. And I found this at Hobby Lobby in case you were wondering. And we're going to make his little ears out of that. So we're going to make the ends meet. So we have a loop at the top and double that up. So then we have those two ears. And then for his body, which is actually going to be his cotton tail, we're going to use a pom pom maker and some yarn from Dollar Tree to make a cotton bunny tail. I love this little pom pom maker and it's so easy. I found it on Amazon too. I'll link it down below, but I love that Dollar Tree now carries lots of great yarns. You can make different size pom poms or different colors of pom poms, whatever you need, whenever you have these pom pom makers. So this came in really handy and you just wrap your yarn around it, close it up, and then you can snip the ends or the loops. So you have ends then and then tie on an extra piece of string that will then close up the middle and keep all of your pieces together. And then the pom-pom maker just comes apart, it pops apart and you have a pom-pom. Now you do have to do a little bit of hair cutting, which I shouldn't say hair cutting, but that's pun intended, no pun intended. <laughs> and then you have the perfect size little pom-pom cotton tail to then hot glue onto your sign. And then this is optional. I just thought I would add a little bit more color and life to my little bunny with some greenery and some purple flowers. And then also added some Dollar Tree ribbon glued in a loop onto the back there. So that way you can then hang it from either your front door, your wall, a cabinet, wherever you need a little extra dash of Easter decor. Dollar Tree is getting into the flow of seeing what is popular and the stacked books definitely are. These are from Valentine's Day, but I decided to grab this and convert it into a Easter uh, set of books instead. So I just took some white paint and covered everything up so that way I can then come in with different colors to give it more of a spring vibe. So mine I painted pink and blue and white and then came in with some white paint and covered up those creases to make them blend a little better. And then we're gonna add our decals onto this. But again, if you don't have a vinyl machine, you can always use a pen or a marker and write your own words in if you like. I just used sort of a typewriter font for this and applied those decals onto each one of the little faux books that says, now Easter makes me happy. Then one last added element, we're going to wrap our books with some ribbon, just tying a simple knot on the top and cutting off the excess. And it kind of makes it look like your books are kind of bound together. And it also adds a cute little extra touch of spring. It looks so, so cute on this tiered tray, which is another Dollar Tree DIY, one that I had made a full video on how to hack toilet plungers from Dollar Tree. So I'll make sure to link that up in the iCards and down below. So definitely check out that video too. There's some really fun projects in there. Now, this is another Valentine's Day item. It's a jewelry box, but it's really nice and ceramic with a pop top on it. We're gonna turn this heart into an Easter bunny. So I'm using some permanent markers to draw on an Easter bunny face. 
And then for his ears, I'm using some stiff white felt, just drew some bunny shaped ears, cut those out, added a little bit of pink to them with some markers, and then hot glued those into where the lid closes down. Just on one side though, we don't wanna close or glue the entire lid closed. And then you have your bunny ears on your cute little jewelry box that you can use for yourself. It'd be cute on a little table or give at Easter time as a gift. I fell in love with these two pack of sort of shiplap style chipboard Easter eggs that Dollar Tree had. Grab three packs of those. We're gonna write out the word Easter on those here shortly. But first I wanted them to look more like shiplap so I'm giving them all two coats of white paint. Now to give them more of a finished look, I'm gonna come in with this thicker jute. It is four ply jute. You can find this at Walmart and craft stores. I'll link mine down in the description box below. You just take some hot glue and go around the edges of your Easter eggs, going all the way up to the top and then cutting off the end and going ahead and doing that with all of them. And then to spell out Easter, we're gonna use these poster stickers from Dollar Tree. And you can also find letter stickers at different craft stores and Walmart, or you can use your vinyl machine to make your own font and decal for your banner to spell out whatever you'd like. And then we're also gonna use that same jute and we're gonna create a banner, just tying a string onto the front of my mantle and then tying each egg onto that string. I love that you can really personalize this. You can leave those Easter eggs the colors they come in if you'd like. So you have a pop of color or do the more neutral look like this and then add color in different ways like flowers or your other decor. And now we're gonna make more of a tabletop garland with the help of these heart-shaped chalkboard tags that are from Dollar Tree. And we do need to cover up that big hole that comes in them. So again, using some Dollar Tree spackle for this, let it dry and then sand it smooth so you'll never know it was there. And then come in on the back side and paint it white. This is going to be our bunny butt, <laughs> for lack of a better word. We are going to need another hole in this heart though. So we're going to drill a hole into the point of the heart and then add some bunny feet here. So again, using a permanent marker to make little bunny toes and a black marker to kind of outline it and give it more detail. I was so excited to find these pastel wood beads at Hobby Lobby. It was about $5 for a big pack of them. But if you wait till they go on sale, they'll be 40 or 50% off so you can get a better deal. If you wait a little bit, I was so excited though, I just went ahead and grabbed them. We're just stringing those onto some jute, adding our little bunny behind onto the bottom there, and then adding a little white pom-pom for his tail. And then we have the cutest little tabletop decor with the pops of spring pastel colors. Love it so much. You can even take regular wood beads and paint them too to get a similar look. Love these cloches from Dollar Tree. You can use them all year long and we're really going to dress this one up and give it a high end look. And we're not gonna have to do too much to it either. We're going to take the top off and take our hot glue gun and melt a hole right into the top. And we're gonna insert a knob onto the top of it as a finial. So this knob is from a Hobby Lobby clearance find. It had like 
a piece of wood with a bunch of these screwed onto it and I got it for next to nothing. Basically just so I could have these beautiful knobs for super cheap. So keep an eye out for things like that that you can repurpose. And you basically just take a screw, screw that onto the top. So we have a very fancy high end look going on already. But I also wanted to make something cute to add to the inside. So we're gonna make a little nest with an egg in it. This is a miniature sized plastic Easter egg. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue the pieces together so they don't come apart. Take some white chalk paint to this, gave it a couple coats, let it dry, and I also wanted it to have a speckled look. So I had some gray chalk paint. We're gonna water that down and use a Dollar Tree toothbrush to kind of splatter that watered down paint onto the egg to give it that speckled look. Isn't it so cute? Now we need to make the little base for this to sit on. So this is a wooden piece from Hobby Lobby 2. They come in a pack of four and I think they are less than a dollar a piece once you price it all out. I want mine to look more like metal than wood though. So this is a creamy paste that gives it a metallic bronze look. So you just rub it on there. I'll link this down below too. I'm obsessed with bronze and brass. So I actually add this to quite a bit of my thrifting finds to kind of antique it. And we're also going to make our own nest with some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. So I'm just sticking that into a ramkin because that's about the size of nest I wanted. And then twisting and rolling that into the middle of the nest so that it kind of just doesn't shed quite so much when you do it that way. It makes that little hole in the middle. So super cute little nest. We're going to then add it to our little base, which how cute is that? I love that so much. Just a little touch of that bronze really made that come to life and look more high end. We're gonna add some hot glue onto the top of that, add our nest, and then hot glue our speckled egg into the nest too. And that's our little statement piece that will go inside our Dollar Tree cloche. I love the way this turned out. It is so gorgeous, very high-end look, but it's also a very subtle touch of spring, which I love, can be used all spring and summer long. Now this next project is definitely not a subtle touch of spring. We're gonna make an Easter bunny basket with this silver tin from Dollar Tree along with their nautical rope. And we're basically gonna take our hot glue and wrap and wrap and wrap this tin until it's covered. So we are gonna be adding the bunny face onto the front of this bucket, but we also need to add some ears. So we're gonna use some stiff brown felt, again, just cutting some bunny ear shapes out of that. And then using our hot glue to, again, cover those ears with the same nautical rope. And then once you have both of your ears finished, you can just use your hot glue again to attach those to the inside front of your bucket. Then to add his face detail, we're using some regular black felt to cut out circles for his eyes, nose, and then strips for his little whiskers. Then you can use your hot glue to add all of those onto the front.
This came out so cute. You could add little treats to this. And honestly, I feel like I need to make two more for my other two kiddos. So they each have one for Easter. Love it so, so much. Now I also have a free printable for you, which I'll link down below. And we're gonna use this chip clip from Dollar Tree to make the quickest and easiest Easter accessory, but really you could adapt this for any time of the year too. I wanted this chip clip to look more like wood. So I'm painting it brown, one color first, and then coming in with a different color paint to give it more of a variation. And then here is what that free printable looks like. I will make sure to link that down in the description box below. You'll get the graphic and then you can scale it and size it if you want, or you can just print it and it will print just like this. You can use cardstock or you can use regular printer paper. It's up to you. You'll clip that onto your chip clip and then we're going to embellish it a little bit. Again, with that cute burlap polka dot ribbon, making a bow, adding some greenery, just dressing it up. You can do this. You can add your own embellishments or you can change out the decor for the different holidays and seasons and also unclip your printable and add something else too. I love the versatility of this simple project. I also wanted to add in my absolute favorite Easter and spring DIYs into this video. So if you're new, you probably have never seen these before. So they'll be new to you. We're gonna make some carrots out of a canvas Dollar Tree bag, just cutting it out so we have the fabric. We're also gonna cut these into triangles, basically cutting an X into the fabric. Now we have four pieces to work with. Again, I'm gonna be using my fabric hot glue for this. If you want to sew, you absolutely can. We're gonna take the longer side and we're gonna fold that up so those points meet at the top and hot glue up the other side. So we have one open side and the longer side we have glued closed. This is gonna be the basic shape of our carrot. So go ahead and do that to all four of your pieces. And then we are going to flip them right side out. scissors or a pencil help to get that point pushed out all the way. Then you'll open it up, lay it flat, and we're gonna take our scissors and cut that point off the top so we have a straight edge along the top now. The great thing is too, you can personalize these by using whatever fabric you want or one that's more carrot look like. This is just kind of a fun way to repurpose a canvas bag. Once you have all of your canvas shapes, you can start stuffing them. You can use napkins, or I like to use the inside of pillows, and then also just put a little bit of greenery on top, add some glue in there, tie them up with some jute or ribbon, and that will keep them closed. And you can do that to all of your carrots, make a little grouping. They're so cute in a bowl or added onto a side table as a cute little Easter decor piece. Next, my grandma used to make these cute little bunnies out of washcloths. So this is another cute fabric project, but we're gonna use a baby blanket from Dollar Tree for this one. Basically just cutting a square out of the center of it. So we have a square, but we're also going to do a little work to this, turning our square to a diamond shape, pulling our bottom corner to the top so we have a nice flat edge on the front. And then you'll go ahead and roll up your fabric so you kind of have a tube. Then we're gonna take an Easter egg and we're going to put that right in the middle, folding those corners up to meet at the top. This is gonna make our cute little bunny face. 
And then you can use ribbon. I'm gonna use a combination of Dollar Tree lace and raffia to wrap this up and keep that Easter egg in place. You can fill your Easter egg with treats or money, give this as a gift, or you can leave it as is and use it for cute decor. For this next one, you're gonna to wanna to grab a Dollar Tree canvas. This is an eight by 10 size. I'm covering mine with drop cloth, but you could also use whatever fabric you have on hand or even one of those canvas bags from Dollar Tree like I showed you in a previous project. Just using some fabric hot glue to glue it on there, you can staple it too. And once you have that covered, we are going to take a wood Dollar Tree sign. It had a little bunny off to the side, so I cut that off of the main side sign and then covered that entirely with some moss trim that all up kind of shook it out so it wouldn't shed too bad you can also take some hairspray to it that's a little trick to keep it from shedding too much again with some dollar tree lace i'm covering up the edges and then hot gluing my bunny on top and then a dollar tree metal easter wording sign to create this gorgeous spring decor sign Now we're going to combine a wax melter from Dollar Tree along with one of their plastic egg trays to make kind of a pretty tiered tray, but it's only got one tier basically. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. I'm using some white chalk paint to paint both of those completely. Now here's a little tip. If you're gonna be using this for real edible eggs, you'll just wanna paint the bottom. However, if you're just using it for decorative purposes and using fake eggs on on it you can go ahead and flip this over and paint both sides and you'll definitely want to make sure you do at least two coats of paint on both to get good coverage So I decided I just wanted mine for more of decorative purposes versus using it for real food. So you can see when you flip it over, we still have kind of that shiny look. I wanted mine to be a little bit more rustic. So I went ahead and used my chalk paint to paint in the top side, two coats on that as well. And that will take that shine away and give you a pretty matte finish. And then one more optional step is if you want it to look more like enamel, like metal versus plastic or ceramic, you can take a little bit of black paint and sort of hit and touch little spots on your piece, especially the raised edges, and it'll give it a chippy enamel look. So I did that on both the wax warmer and also on the egg tray. And now we can go ahead and put this together. I am using some hot glue, but I would highly recommend using something like super glue. That'll give you more of a permanent and long-term bond, whereas hot glue can kind of pop off pretty easily. And then it's pretty much good to go. If you want, you can use a clear spray to seal in your paint, but if you're using chalk paint, that is not necessarily 
because likely it's not gonna chip too badly anyway. Or if you give it a chippy effect like I did, it doesn't matter if it chips, you can just kind of add to the character of it. But I thought this was so cute. I added some Dollar Tree Easter eggs in there and some Spanish moss, a little Easter bunny on top and a wreath. Just a cute little look in addition to my Easter home decor. Next up, we're gonna turn two packs of Dollar Tree speckled eggs into a Easter wreath. Now, I'm gonna be using a drill to drill holes into my Easter eggs, but you could even take your hot glue gun and melt holes into each end. So as you can see, just drilling holes into all of those Easter eggs. And we're gonna use some jute to string through all of them. It kind of makes a garland. However, we're gonna put the, the ends of our jute together to make a circle and a wreath. So it may be hard to find a strong enough or long enough needle to be able to feed your jute through. So a little tip here is to add some scotch tape onto the end of your jute so you have this long sort of makeshift needle. That way it will fit from one end to the other and you can go ahead and string all of your Easter eggs onto there. I just did mine in a similar pattern before tying a knot to create that circle. And then to make this look more like a wreath, we're gonna add a bow on there. This is Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. I just make a loop and then bring the centers together so I have even loops on both sides. Taking my jute and wrapping that around the center and then you can cut a separate piece and fold that in half. That way you will have your tail separate from the bow and then it makes your bow a little bit more uh, nice looking and even looking. Just tie that all together, add it onto your wreath. You can cut your tails at angles or dovetail them. I just did angles to keep it simple. And then you just add that right onto your Easter egg wreath. And then because it's kind of floppy, I also came in with my hot glue and added some hot glue in between each one of the Easter eggs. And that gives it more rigidity. I love grabbing t-shirts from Dollar Tree because you can use them for fabric for your projects. So we're gonna turn this white one into one that looks like an Easter bunny, but I wanted it to be more rustic looking. So I'm gonna tea dye my t-shirt white fabric 
With some tea bags, I just put some tea bags into a bowl, poured over some hot water, and then removed those tea bags after they had steeped for about five minutes. Added a little bit more water, and then I added my t-shirt in there and let it sit for a little bit. You definitely wanna make sure you rinse this out really well, wash it, dry it, before you actually use the fabric for this project. And then here you can see the difference of the before and after. But of course, with this project, you can use whatever fabric you'd like to. Just thought this was kind of a neat way to utilize a Dollar Tree item. So we're gonna fold, or actually we're gonna lay this t-shirt out flat. So you can see we have a double up effect with the fabric. And then I'm just using a pencil and free handing a tall and skinny Easter Bunny silhouette onto this. And then we're gonna cut that out. For this project, we wanna make sure we are cutting about a half inch wider or outside of those original drawn lines because we're gonna be leaving the edges raw on this project. We're not gonna be flipping it inside out or right side out. And for that reason, I am using pinking shears for this project, which is kind of gives a zigzag effect along the edge and it also helps cut down on fraying. Now you can see our original lines that we drew on there. Those are gonna be a guide for us as we go to put this pillow together. Again, I'm using hot glue in my fabric hot glue sticks to add the two pieces together. You can sew if you'd like, and we are going to work our way from top to bottom, making sure to leave the bottom open, and that's where we're gonna be adding our stuffing. So my pro tip here is I always like to mention to grab yourself one of the cheapest pillows at Walmart. They're between two and three dollars and use the stuffing from them versus buying actual batting from the craft section. You'll save a ton of money and this goes a long way. So I'm starting with the ears and just working my way down. Once I get to the bottom, I add some more of that fabric hot glue to close it all in. And then you can go ahead and embellish your pillow however you'd like. I kept mine simple by just adding a little bow onto the neck of my bunny rabbit. And my ribbon was a little bit too big and it had the wire in it. So I just took my pinking shears again and cut that wire off and cut my ribbon down to a smaller size that worked with this pillow. Tying a knot, adding a little bow, and that was it for this adorable little pillow that I sat in our entryway. I love this next project because it is such a simple and easy way to dress up these speckled eggs from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna be using chalk paint and also these cute little stickers that I'm gonna stick onto the eggs as stencils or silhouettes. You can also go to the craft store and find little Easter stickers to use or you can create your own using contact paper like I have here in my vinyl machine. I do have a video on how to make contact paper stencils which I'll also link down in the description box below. And basically all you do is you'll need some 
eggs, stencils, paint, and that's about it. If you want to make these a little bit easier to paint, here's the trick. Once you stick your stickers onto your eggs, if you have a Dollar Tree piece of styrofoam and some of their barbecue skewers, you can stick your egg onto a barbecue skewer and then stick it down into your styrofoam and it'll keep your egg from rolling around on you as it's drying or as you are painting it. And basically we're just going to add these stickers on, add some paint on top of those. And once the paint is dry, you can remove your stickers and have a cute Easter silhouette Easter egg. This next one is great because you don't need any fancy items or even Dollar Tree specific items to create. We're gonna make an Easter bunny banner using some old book pages. Now Dollar Tree does have books, so you can actually use those too if you want. I'm starting by creating a simple bunny silhouette here, and that is gonna be the first one of many that I'm going to make using this one as a template. A tip here is to layer a few book pages together so that way you can cut out multiple ones at the same time. That'll save you a lot of time as you are creating these. Now, once we have all of our Easter bunnies cut out, we are going to come in with a hole punch and we're gonna punch a hole into each one of the Easter bunnies ears. We're gonna string these up with some jute and we're also gonna add some cotton balls um, onto the bottoms there with some tacky glue and give them a cotton tail. This is definitely one of my favorite 
Easter projects. I'm using an old recycled can, covering it with some ribbon, but you could use fabric too. We're gonna make sort of an Easter bunny topiary. So once we have our can covered, I'm using some Dollar Tree styrofoam to insert into the can. Now I'm personally taking apart an old topiary that I already had for this, but you can also take a styrofoam ball, insert some greenery and get the same effect. We're gonna use some paper covered floral wire to make some Easter bunny ears. Really, really simple. You just kind of twist it at the bottom and make a point towards the top. And we're gonna use those to stick down into our topiary. I'll make sure to link this wire down in the description box below to make it easy for you to find too. You can also find wire at Dollar Tree. It comes in different colors. You may have to paint it, but that's an option too. So you can see I just twisted those together and then stuck that down down into the topiary top and then use some Dollar Tree ribbon to embellish with some loops like a bow. Now we're gonna make sort of a banner style Easter sign. This is one you can find at Dollar Tree. I wanted to use the front, but it had all of this color and design on it. So I took my orbital sander to get that all off, but you could also take paint and just paint it out too. This will just kind of save you some of those layers of paint later on, because we're gonna give this a buffalo check print. And then all you'll need to do that is some paint and some painter's tape. I also have a bunny head silhouette here. So I painted that white first, and then we're gonna also paint the bottom of our banner white too. So one way to do this is you could actually add Buffalo check scrapbook paper and Mod Podge that on, or you can paint it on, which I'm gonna show you here. It's actually really easy, and I'm gonna give you a quick version here, but I have a full tutorial that kind of slows it down and shows you all the details of how to make your own painted on buffalo check. But basically, I'm adding vertical stripes with my painter's tape onto my sign, adding some dark gray paint on there over the white paint. And then once you have that on, you can remove that painter's tape. We wanna let that dry before then turning it and adding more vertical stripes just in the opposite direction. And we're gonna start in the middle this time and we are gonna work our way to the outside, creating those same stripes with our painter's tape. This time though, we're, we are gonna paint the same color. We're gonna add gray on here again. And then this time though, we are not going to remove this layer of painter's tape. And here's the close up look. You can kind of see where those ghosted lines are of where we are going to then put our next layer of tape. Like I said, don't take the first layer off. We're gonna come in with our painter's tape and eyeball where the original paint lines were when we first did this with the first layer. So kind of take your time, line it up really well. And this time we're gonna come in with some black paint and we are going to paint in all of those little squares and then the magic really happens when you go to remove all of the painter's tape. So it is really cool how this turns out in the end. We're also gonna take that tape off of the top. I'm gonna come in with some dark brown paint so we can make that top look more like wood. Thank you. 
I really wanted the bunny head to kind of have some definition and stand out from the background. So I'm taking some black paint and just going lightly around all of the edges. I'm gonna let that dry. And then I also wanted it to have a raised effect against the background of the sign. So a little trick here is to use the padded felt feet from Dollar Tree. You will just take the paper backing off of those and use your hot glue to then glue the felt onto your sign. Gives it a nice 3D effect. So yes, you could hang this on the wall as a cute little grouping, but I think this would be so pretty, like I have it shown here, as the centerpiece to a boxwood wreath. I love that Dollar Tree has terracotta pots. They come in a set of two if you get this medium size here, which is a great deal. And we're gonna make some little planters for springtime. So what we're gonna do first is just take our white chalk paint and paint our pots. And as you can see, I left the rims of these pots the original terracotta color. I also added two coats of paint to make sure I had good coverage. The white really brightens these up. You can also use their nautical rope to go around that top rim. Hot glue works great for this. You just go along all the edges and kind of wrap it until you get to the top. Then you can add little sticker letters onto the fronts of your pots. You can use decals, you can get letter stickers from Walmart and craft stores, or you could even use a marker and draw them on yourself. I'm having mine say grow, but if you wanted to write spring or Easter, just add the number of pots you need to make sure you have a pot for each letter.
Then you can add your pretty flowers into these planters, whether they're faux flowers or even if you add some soil and add some seeds or some pretty real flowers in there, these are multifunctional. to take a plastic thermometer from Dollar Tree to a whole new level. This is a piece of scrap wood that I already had. It was a perfect size to not only attach that plastic thermometer onto, but also to add a decal onto the top to really make it look cute and decorative. So this is a decal that says garden sweet garden, but you can also use a white paint pen or a white chalk marker and write your own little uh, cute saying at the top and then I'm also adding a sawtooth picture hanger onto the back I love these because you just hammer them right in I'll make sure to link these down in the description box below too because you can find them on Amazon and then to add our thermometer onto the top I'm just using some e6000 to glue it on Now you already saw this project in the reveal of the last project. It is sort of a topiary style spring piece. I'm using a Dollar Tree terracotta pot, adding some Dollar Tree styrofoam into there and using one of their smaller wreaths, which you can also find at craft stores. And to make that sit up in there, I'm using some wire, some floral wire, just twisting it onto the bottom of the wreath. A little bit of hot glue helps too, making sure that they stick out at the bottom. And that is what I'm going to press down into the styrofoam to make it sit up. Definitely use some hot glue here too to help it stay that way. And so it can kind of withstand temperature changes and weather changes. And then to kind of make this all come together, we're gonna use some Dollar Tree moss to cover up the styrofoam and just add it here and there onto the wreath. I love these little gnomes at Dollar Tree, but they were a little bit busy, so I thought I'd tone them down a little bit and just spray paint each one of them a different color. So I have like a sagey green color, gray and white to kind of make a nice matching set. Literally just sat them on bricks, took them outside and spray painted them with a couple coats, let them dry and then you can use them indoors or out. You can use these Dollar Tree crates for so many things, but I really love the springtime version. I wanted to give this more of a weathered wood look, so I am painting the entire thing gray first. And then if you come in with white paint on top of that, kind of adding it on sparingly, you'll get sort of a grayish toned wood effect.
and I love that it gives it such a chippy and weathered look. Once that's dry, we can add a decal on to the front of this. This one says fresh flowers, so almost like a flower market basket. You can see that the vinyl sort of goes over those crevices. So I just used uh, a knife and cut that and kind of folded them in. Then added these cute little bottles that are from Dollar Tree. They carry uh, seashells, so you just dump those out. You can add those to your crate, add some flowers, and be a cute little flower market basket. Let me know which one of these 25 projects was your favorite down in the comments below and then head over to Bargain Bethany where she has even more spring and Easter DIYs waiting for you. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next one. Happy crafting.